those of you okay we're starting to fill up again and those of you at home who are watching us um, for, since I have the mic um, I would like to first say thank you to all the people who put their cards and prayers with my sister's passing and I don't know where he's going but I want you to know our new pastor Pastor Kim came up for my sister's reception made a six hour round trip just to, to honor her. So I thank Pastor Kim very much for that. I think that really shows his caring and his family-oriented um, service. Anyway, um, just a real quick uh, message here about that we have started up our youth and teen activities and our Sunday schools. So please look at that to see if we can interest you in getting involved in that. And with that, Pastor Kim. Thank you, Gail. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So good to see you all. Um, so, did you enjoy the cool breeze this morning? Yeah, it was a little bit chilly, right? Yeah, it's coming. Uh, this is changing. But through this worship service, I hope, I really pray that we can feel the warmth of God together and the warmth of each other so that we can celebrate our familyhood together in God. Okay? And I also welcome those who are watching Facebook Lives. Uh, Facebook Live. Right? It's live. It's alive. Yeah, and then later on to the YouTube. Yeah, and when we are worshiping God, um, I really hope uh, we are blessed by the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Okay, Gail. Please stand for our call to worship. Why do you stand so far away, Lord? Hiding yourself in troubling times. Don't forget the ones who suffer. That help us leave it all to you. Lord, you listen to the desires of those who suffer. You steady their hearts. You listen closely to them. Please join together in our opening hymn, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, number 133. So don't leave out a goodie, so sing out.
and that is not the only one. We have many painful experiences and losses and suffering in our lives, and you can name it. So I would like to um, invite you to pray, especially this morning, for those who are suffering from any type of loss and any type of suffering and pain and affliction and difficult situations. And it could be for your family, for your friends, for your neighbor, or people uh, you saw on TV. So I'd like to uh, invite you to pray for them. And Gail, please. Reading together. Precious Father, we thank you for calling us to pray for one another, our loved ones and the community. Living in this world, we have noticed and experienced many sufferings, iniquities, and violence. Countless tears have been shed, and immeasurable heavy sighs were let out. Allow your mercy, Lord. Let your justice roll. Through this worship, help us to understand your holy will and a living will for us. In Jesus' name we pray. so much pain in times of our losses. Help us to navigate the path of faith in tough times as faithful disciples of Jesus. Comfort those who are grieving in their losses, no matter how much time passed. Give them peace and hope in you so they can move forward for their purpose of lives. Answer to us when questions are around so we can come closer and closer to you. We also pray for those whose names are on our prayer list, those in our thoughts, and those we are not aware of. Allow your healing for those who are struggling with their health issues, both physically and also mentally. Bless those starting a new thing in their lives. Provide what they need for those in financial needs. Bring reconciliation where there is a conflict. Bless and protect our community and send us to our family, friends, and neighbors at your hands and feet for changing lives, transforming communities by reaching, welcoming, and engaging. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not our temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us praise our Lord in reading number 534.
to sit down here, please. If you would join me down here, so we can see in the mirror. And hi to our friends that are out there on Facebook. Oh, thank you, Pastor. Ben. Okay, so when we look in this mirror, what do we see? Do you see yourselves? Yeah. Can you, you want to scoot over so you can see? <laughs> I'll scoot out of the way a little bit there. I'm going to grab my papers, pardon me. There you go. All right. And so when I look in the mirror, I see myself, but I also see, I see my mom because people tell me that I, that I kind of, do you kind of look like somebody that you, that's in your family? <laughs> well, I don't see, my mom is not actually here, yours is, but when I look at my face in the mirror, I see things about my face that are similar to my mom's face. And people tell me that I am similar to my grandmother, that there are things similar about my grandmother, things that we look the same, things that we did and like to do that were the same. All right, friends, will you turn around and look at me now? You can put the mirror down, Pastor Kim. Thank you. All right, so when I look in there, I see not only my face, but I see a resemblance to my mom's face and my grandmother's face. And I remember people telling me that I look like them, that I do things that are similar to them. And so sometimes I wish that my grandmother was still here. She's not still here. Oh, that's okay, that's okay. Um, and I wish that she could be here so that we can enjoy those things together. Maybe there's people in your lives that have died that you wish were here that you could share something with them. In our Bible story today, there is a friend of Jesus who, who we're going we're gonna to hear about this friend of Jesus named Lazarus. So will you listen with me as Mrs. Moriarty reads to us about this part of Lazarus' story. From John 11, 32 through 37. When Mary arrived where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. When Jesus saw her crying, and the Jews who had come with her cried also, he was deeply disturbed and troubled. He asked, Where have you laid him? They replied, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to cry. The Jews said, See how much he loved him? But some of them said, he healed the eyes of the man born blind. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. All right. So Lazarus, Jesus' dear friend, has died. And Jesus cried. Jesus was sad. And when we have someone in our lives that dies that we love very much, just like Jesus cried, we cry, and we're sad. And Jesus was with Mary, his friend, and Lazarus' sister. Jesus was there when they were sad. And Jesus is with us when we are sad also. So we can remember that in those sad times, that we are not alone, that Jesus is with us, his presence is with us, and in the family and friends that are with us in those times, we experience Jesus' love and Jesus' compassion for us. And I want you to remember that 
that when you have those sad times in your lives, when someone that you love very much has died, that Jesus is with us, that his love and his compassion is all around us, helping us and guiding us. And because of what Jesus did on Easter morning, when Jesus rose from the dead, we get to have eternal life. We get to live with Jesus forever. Will you say amen? Amen. 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 Will you pray an echo prayer with me? We're going to pray an eyes wide open prayer this morning. So we're going to leave our eyes open and we are going to pray together. Let us pray. Loving Jesus. Thank you for our faces. Thank you for our memories of those we love. Help us see them and you in our hearts and to know your promise of eternal life. Amen. All right, friends, shall we go learn more about Lazarus and Children's Church? Yes. Let's do that. Now, Shirley Cooper will play the piano with a special music, Shirley the Furthest.
three unforgettable incidents happened in the United States. According to 9-11 Memorial and Museum, four coordinated terrorist attacks carried out on September 11, 2001. 19 terrorists hijacked four commercial airplanes, deliberately crashing two of the planes into the upper floors of the North and South Towers of the World Trade Center complex, and a third plane into the Pentagon in Arlington, Virginia. The Twin Towers ultimately collapsed because of the damage sustained from the, the impacts and the resulting fires. And after learning about the other attacks, passenger, passengers on the fourth hijacked plane, Flight 93, fought back and the plane was crashed into the empty field in the western Pennsylvania about 20 minutes by air from Washington, D.C. That arouses so many <coughs> questions and issues and discussions and uh, many things in politics, economy, religion, and so on. It goes on and on. But one of the things that struck my mind the most was the fact that 2,977 lives from 93 countries were lost. They were innocent civilians, sons and daughters, moms and dads, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers of so many countless people. The whole country, the whole world, read a lot, painfully. In our sermon series in September, we ask very tough questions, trying to find some answers from the Holy Spirit. And we will share about loss today. Let us pray. Almighty God, your word is perfect, but your servant is not. So inspire me with the Holy Spirit. Open our hearts and minds and teach us so that we can understand your will and your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 9-11 was an extreme case of human loss. But a loss is part of nature and human life. And we experience uh, loss, any type of loss in our daily lives. You know, we see in nature flowers losing their petal like this, beautiful petals, and trees lose their leaves, yeah. they lose soon, and then lobsters lose their shells. And um, we experienced losses too. When I was uh, first or second grade, I bought a check in front of my, my school from the old lady um, who was selling the chicks. So I was overjoyed. That was my first pet ever. <laughs> so I played with it with with him or her. I am not sure, but <laughs> I played with him, him, and then I really loved him. But after a few days, the chick was found dead. In the morning, he was not opening his eyes. So I was so sad. My heart was broken, and I couldn't express, uh, um, how, I didn't know how to express my sadness. But then I didn't know that our life is full of losses. Now, every stage of life, there are losses. Babies lose their teeth, right? And then we sometimes lose our hairs or our minds. <laughs> One of the few joyful losses uh, for many might be a loss of our weight. But mostly, a loss is so painful experience. The children 
leave home for their jobs or college. Pets, jobs, or senior citizen is told that you cannot drive anymore. Or miscarriage, loved ones passing, health, divorce, Alzheimer's disease and losing precious memories. And you can fill in the blanks. And as I have met the members of our church, I was astonished by the painful experiences of loss. And then how I admired um, you that how you could manage in your pain of loss. How could you stand strong in faith? I was so astonished. And then we wonder why? Why are there so many losses in our lives? <clears throat> they are so painful, and losses are keep coming and keep coming. No exception. And every one of us have our own experience of loss. Today's passage, Lazarus, a brother of Mary and Ma uh, Ma Martha, died, and he was very young. And these sisters, these sisters tried to save him, calling Jesus, and then he they expected him to come and heal him, but it didn't happen. Their brother died, and it's been days past. Now, without, without any hope, they met Jesus and they cried. If you have been here, my brother would not have died. In resentment, sorrow, sadness, they blamed Jesus. But that's very natural feelings that can come after losses. So if God created life, logically, God created loss too. If God created life for some reason or purpose, there might be some reason or purpose for losses too. But we are trying to um, unpack and try to find if we can find some answer to that question through this story of Lazarus. One of the clear message is that loss sends us to each other. Many Jews have come to comfort Martha and Mary after their brother's death. And then when Jesus saw her crying and the Jews who had come with her crying also, the sisters, Martha and Mary, were not alone when they lost brother, their brother Lazarus died. They were with Lazarus' sisters and wept with them, the Jews came to them and then surround them with compassion. Law sends to each other, and God does not like us to be alone. That's why he created a partner for Adam. Then the Lord God said, It's not good that the human is alone. I will make him a helper that is perfect for him. Especially it's terrible to be alone when someone is going through loss. Maybe you have felt that loneliness. Maybe uh, you also have felt the supportive love that loss brings when others, when, when people come to you for your loss. Apostle Paul encouraged the Roman church, be happy with those who are happy and cry with those who are crying. We just come to each other we gather together when there is a loss. When we found that somebody lost, you know, somebody is experiencing losses, something within us telling us, go, go to that person and be with them. We come to them physically or through prayer or cards or social media comments and we want to be with them. Perhaps God created loss in, our, in this life to send us to each other because it is not good for us to be alone. That's how we are created. 
Maybe another reason that God has created so much loss in our lives is that loss teaches us who the true master is. When we lose something or someone uh, in the relationship or some condition, that means we have that relationship or something or someone, um, some, some situation or some condition once, but had but, but now no more. We had some time, but no more. Everything was interested and will be interested to us by God. There's nothing we created, right? We are given, we are entrusted by God, our Creator, even our lives. Our life is not ours either. When we think what we are entrusted is ours, our achievements or our possessions, we can become proud or paranoid about losing it. Saul was very humble king, as you know, but he became proud and forgot it was God who made him a king. So he built, he set up the, a monument for himself instead of building an altar for God. Samuel announced him that God decided to remove him from his throne because that, you know, he had to know it was God, not him. And um, he will, God will give it to another person, someone else. He will give it to a friend of yours, someone who is more worthy than you. When he found David might be that person, he began to be afraid of David. Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with God, with David, but no longer with Saul. Later, he got paranoid and pursued David, trying to kill him. He didn't accept that God is the master who has the right to give and take it back. Loss can send us to our knees in humility and help us to confess that we are not the owner or master, even our lives. Anything we have is God's. Now pride always leads us to downfall. One day four people were on a plane, uh, a pilot and a computer expert and a retired minister and a boy scout. And the flight, the flight was crashing, the falling down, and then the, there was only there were only three parachutes. So the pilot was like, "I have my wife and my children, so I have to live." And then she jumped, grabbing the parachute, and jumped out of the plane. And the computer guy was like, "I'm the one of the smartest people in the world. So people, the world need my expertise and my knowledge. So I need to live." And then he jumped out of the plane. The minister, retired minister, was like um, talking to the Boy Scout. Son, I have lived, I have lived a long and good life. So, um, and you are young, so I wanted to take this parach parachute to live. And the Boy Scout says, Reverend, don't worry about it. The smartest man in the world just took my knapsack and jumped out. <laughs> <laughs> Pride <laughs> <laughs> always leads us to a downfall. When Job lost his animal, all the animals and then his, even his children on the same day, he famously confessed, Naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked I will return there. The Lord has given, the Lord has taken. Bless the Lord's name. So maybe, maybe God has allowed such loss to teach us God is our master and we are his stewards. And but ultimately, I believe God has allowed such loss to send us to write back to God. Is that where we go when loss comes and when crisis comes and when terrible things, terrible news come, something instinctively 
send us back to God saying, God, I need your help. Or aren't we praying that I need your comfort, I need your peace? Or even we ask existential questions to God with why? But overall, when we are experiencing God, we look for God. We come to God in today's passage. As soon as Mary was told by Martha, the teacher is here and asking for you, and she got up and ran to Jesus. She says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. In her anger and blaming, yet she cries out to the Lord. Jesus was big enough to listen to her complaint. When Jesus saw her and the visitors cry, even though he knew he, he could raise, raise Lazarus from the dead, he wept too. Jesus wept too in his compassion because his heart was breaking too. I had a parishioner who had two sons but had lost his oldest son and had to um, put her, put his wife to the nursing home because her Parkinson's disease um, got worse and worse and he couldn't take care of her anymore. And then one day he got the news that his, the other son, the one who was left, was found dead due to a heart attack. And I, after I heard the news, I visited him in his empty house. With silence, I had no word to say. In his pain, he asked me a lot of questions. And he talked about his wife, his two sons, and his life with them. I could feel pain suffering in his heart. And after the hours of visit, I asked him if he would like to pray with me. And he said yes. And I didn't know what to say, how to pray. But in during our prayer, prayer, God gave me the words that he knew his pain. And he is the one who can be, who can empathize with him because God is the one once he lost his own one and only son on the cross. God can be empathetic with us. God knows our pain. So through our losses, we can come back to God. When David lost his honor, position, safety, and escaping from Saul, and had to pretend to be crazy before his enemies for his life, he confesses God's presence with him, saying, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He saves those whose spirits are crushed. Our God is big enough to embrace our heart in agony. After all, Jesus turned Lazarus to life and he proves that God has the power over all things. And we can turn to God in our losses because he can wipe away every tear of ours. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. There will be no mourning, crying, or pain anymore. We experience losses. Some of losses are so painful. Some of them are a little just like mine of chicks. But all is the same that the heart is broken. All we have to do is to send ourselves to God, for it is the place we go with our losses. Let us pray. Gracious God. We thank you for your comfort in our losses. 
in times of loss. Send us to each other in mutual love and support as one body of Christ. Teach us you are the master of all creation, including our lives, and call us to come to you who promised to be with us to the very end of the age. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. so much for entrusting us to uh, everything to us and now as a token of gratitude we give you our offerings and time please bless these offerings so that it can be used for your glory for this ministry of yours to save lives to make a difference and bless those who gave confessing their stories stewardship before you and bless them, their families, so that they can live their lives accordingly as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Do you have any good news to share? We, uh, we celebrated our 67th two uh, days ago. Uh -huh. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay. Yes. Um, I'd just like to say if anyone's interested in singing in our choir, we're going to start that back up now that I'm back home for good. And um, I will be reaching out. But if you haven't sung before, don't worry. You don't have to have a wonderful voice. You don't have to be able to read music. We will help you. You just got to sing to the Lord. So, choir will be coming. Thank you so much, Gail. Well, I'm so excited. <laughs> Okay, Rima. I'd like to thank the Lord and all the prayers that was given for my sister this last week. She went through a severe back surgery. She'll be down for two more months, but she's able to walk and get around and less pain. Still the pain, but less. And I praise God for that. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other good news to share? I have one. Okay. This seems trivial. Compared to what everybody else shared. Uh oh. But our grandson <laughs> made four touchdowns. <laughs> 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 Good job. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, and I visited the first uh, football game for uh, Wildcat last Friday. Yeah, the, the, their opponent was very tough, but they did a very good job. I was so impressed then, and then, you know, sports are, games are, you can win or lose, right? But they show their very good sportsmanship. So, yeah, I was so glad, and, um, you know, it was so good, it's a good time. And my family, whole family enjoyed it. Okay. Do you have anything else to show? Okay. Yeah. I just want people to look at the flowers that are on the altar. They'll arrange them, do you see angel or dove wings? Uh, right. yes. And I'm, on the left, if you look at the white pink flower, it's called live forever. Uh, now that doesn't mean it lives through Kansas winter, but 
<laughs> but if you think about what that says to people that we've lost, they live in our hearts, mm -hmm. our minds, our memories. Mm -hmm. good, Thank you. Good 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 choice, Bill. Thank you so much. Anything else? Okay, Jen. Actually, I'm, I'm still visiting here, and I'm here with my three grandchildren today. A few weeks ago, my daughter and son-in-law came. Uh, my daughter just, uh, I don't even remember now how many days it's been, because things have been pretty crazy, but she had um, her fourth child, a little girl, eight weeks early. Um, she weighed three pounds, 4.9 ounces, and they're all doing well, but it's going to be a long road, and uh, Grandma's really tired because I work full time. <laughs> I teach full time in Kamiyatsi, and then I'm keeping the children in the evenings and weekends. But uh, I'm very thankful that even though it was an emergency C section and she had to come early, that that baby is doing well and that mommy is uh, physically recovering well. Okay. Thank you, Jen, for sharing. Congratulations. <laughs>
May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit comfort you, teach you that God is our refuge and our strength in every loss, and be with you all forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters. Thank you.